And of course, obviously I was younger, so I had like a, uh, what's that word? Indest not indestructible. Um, I had a, what's the word where you think nothing bad can happen to you? I'm not indestructible. <laughs> hey Siri, what's the word when you think you're indestruct, invincible? Never mind, Siri, never mind. <laughs> Hey, so it is a very dreary day here in North Carolina. We're about to get a thunderstorm and I figured let's have a chill afternoon. Let's sit down and chat even though I'm super duper nervous to make this video. I I feel like I'm 17 again. <laughs> Weird. There actually are a few of you that have been around since those days and we'll get into that. Um, but before I start this video and get into everything, I do want to make a disclaimer right off the bat. This video is not going to be like spilling any tea, talking poorly about anyone, giving you any type of drama. So if you're here to watch that video to get to know like the inside scoop, you're in the Quad Cities, you're ready for some tea, bitch, um, that's not this video. So I apologize. This video is actually about my journey, myself, hence the title of this video. And if you don't care, then I would suggest not watching this video. <laughs> but if you're coming here for the drama, you're not gonna get it. So I apologize, but that is not the purpose of today's video. I thought long and hard about this and I ultimately came to the decision that the reason why I wanted to share this, this portion, not everything, but this portion of my journey is because I was thinking back to when I first started making YouTube and social media posts and whatnot and the biggest initial motivator for me was finding somebody like myself to relate to and by sharing a lot of my stuff, especially early on, it absolutely helped some people. Obviously, I've had some mistakes and embarrassments throughout the years, who hasn't? But for the most part, my initial goal was to help other people. And if I could do that in any way by sharing like some of these things I've learned about myself, then I feel like it's worth it. So let's get on into it. I just wanted to share that it is not going to be speaking poorly about anyone um, or any type of uh, scandalous things, okay? So let's get on into it. So we're gonna take it back, far back to the pre Instagram days before like being an influencer was a thing. Okay, so if you are new here, I made my debut on social media when I was literally 16, 17 years old on Tumblr. Somehow back then I developed a following. Um, myself and my girlfriend at the time, we started a YouTube channel called No Hate Just Love. And some of you may have been around for that time period. Um, some of you are just finding out about this. But that was probably my truest and authentic self before the internet got to me. Cam, shout out to Cam, at the, at the time we made a YouTube channel and our whole entire goal was to showcase the importance that love should be love no matter what. It's all about being in love with the person for who they are regardless of their gender. And we just kind of talked about like our experience being young um, and going through some of that and kind of trying to be some strong allies in that community. This was obviously before <laughs> hate vlogs and hate was really like a thing, a trolls I should say. I cannot recall getting like any type of negative feedback back in the day. Now granted the ratios were smaller, like I think I had 20,000 followers on Tumblr whereas like now I have 120 on Instagram. So I'm sure maybe if it would have grown there probably would have been, but just for reference, I did not get the amount of hate that I have gotten more recently. But the one thing that I had always been was very just like opinionated, open, loud, unapologetically myself. And I think that that was started from that channel, that No Hate Just Love channel. And it is no longer there. I tried to find some for you guys to like give you proof, but I think it's on like my Mac circa 2009. So who the heck knows where that is? I definitely felt like I was invincible at the time and I didn't quite grasp the hatred 
towards the LGBT community back then. I didn't quite grasp really anything at all. I was raised in a conservative, more religious household, which obviously if those of you who follow me now, I'm sure you completely see that that is not how I ended up. <laughs> but I was just really ignorant and naive. And so I think that when I got into the actual real world, like when I was kind of an adult, and I started blooming into my daddy issues, I started kind of doing this thing where I would like mold myself to whoever I was dating. Like if they liked something then I like automatically liked it. Um, you know, if they were interested in some type of sport, whatever it is, then I was interested in it too. I think like that in combination with my career path at the time when I wasn't sure like what I wanted to do, I had views and beliefs that were actually very different from the people around me. However, I became so insecure with who I really was at the core that I definitely suppressed those morals, views, feelings about things and kind of like molded and shifted myself into the person that I needed to be for the person that I was dating and the people around me. And ultimately what this did for me was not give me a true sense of self. And this is something that I have been working on in therapy recently. My newest, I shouldn't say new, but like my most recent therapist that I've been going to, um, we just recently started diving a lot into like inner child work and a lot of true authentic self. And it dawned on me, and that's what kind of sparked this video. Shout out to Chaz Rooney, my therapist. Um, I want to mention the book that I just started, it's called The Search for the Real Self by James Masterson. And there's like 10 to, or top 10 things that help you, they're like capacities of the real self. I think like as I started understanding this more, the more I realized that like every relationship that i had been in or like group of people, I just was so like deeply insecure that I would adapt to their beliefs and their morals and didn't voice how I felt because it was so differing from theirs and ultimately I was just embarrassed. You know, like I think having the relationship trauma and childhood trauma that I have, I think I really, really desperately wanted to feel that sense of family and like non-judgment that I hid a lot of my past and my true self because I didn't want to be rejected. Um, and that's a very valid feel. And that's something that ultimately basically ended up happening regardless. So I, it kind of pushed me to realize like being my real self and my authentic self is so incredibly important and not just like to myself in private, but to the people who I love and who are around me no matter what. Number 10 point or capacity of the real self is the continuity of self. And this is the capacity to recognize and acknowledge that we have a core that persists through space and time. Kind of, you know, from getting to know myself a little bit more and really understanding, especially as we age, there's like this negative stigma that you, you have to be the same person that you were, or it's like a judgment if you suddenly change your beliefs or your mind or your feelings change. And if there's one thing also that I hope someone gains from this video is that it's okay to have your opinions and your thoughts and your beliefs or your sexuality or anything grow and change with time. One of the things that I've been dealing with a lot recently is being shamed or judged or fought on what I believed was true at the time. And that's okay. Like there are things even like politically that I believed at 21 that I'm now like appalled that I believed, right? And that's okay. That's a part of growing. And sometimes you fuck it up and you make mistakes. You thought you felt a certain way or you thought you believed a certain way. And then you got older and you realized things and your feelings changed and now you believe something else and that's okay. And I wish that I had someone to tell me that when I was that age because I think there was so much um, pressure and judgment for people at that age to like decide something and to, you know, like certain things and be a certain way and never change your mind. 
and I ultimately realized that I don't really care anymore. <laughs> I have changed my mind. I have changed my life. I have changed my mind. I have changed my thought process on so many things over the last few years and I just kind of want to talk about it. Another thing that I had been dealing with was people insisting that I needed a label. And this was actually something that myself and Cam talked about on our channel years ago, was the desire for other people to place labels on us. And I really, personally with what I believe at this time and place in my life is that sexuality is a spectrum. I have loved people for who they are on the inside and I've always been that way. Like even if you were to like line up any of my exes, they all look wildly different. They all have such different personalities and different attributes to them. And I was never attracted to them based on their gender. And I just never like, thought that that was weird and I never was ashamed about it until I was in a relationship with people who did openly shame that kind of thing, you know? And it, it wasn't even like all the time directed at me because like a lot of times people in my life didn't even know. And that was my own fault too, right? Like I felt like over time I became so much less confident in who I was that I hid all of that because I was like, oh my gosh, all these people are not going to like me. They're not going to accept me. They're not going to love me, whatever. And I like continuously did that over years. So as I've gotten to this age and gotten older and in a new transition of my life, people are like slapping labels on me and blaming things on my life for that. And that's incredibly unfair to me because I don't label myself and I never have. And people are so desperate to point the finger and blame and you know just put things out there about me to, with the intent the sole intent to shame and degrade me and I'm just fucking tired of it to be honest because I don't feel like I need to I don't feel like I need to put a label on myself and I don't think there's anything wrong with that and if you are in that point and you also don't feel like you want to label yourself don't do it because I did to appease other people in my past and it wasn't really who I aligned with. So I'm not doing that anymore. So if you want to sit there and put labels on me and say, you know, that this is the reason for that and you, you know, you're this and you're that, that's on you because this is me and I don't like being put into a box. I never have, I like growing, I like evolving, and sometimes it doesn't really fit into the normal society boxes. So, love is love. <laughs> and that is the truth, that's what I feel, I don't care, and I, you know, I just, I don't know, I wanted to talk about this because I feel like some of that stuff is being held against me and being used as a weapon, and that's really, really unfortunate because it, it just shouldn't be. If people in your life are doing that to you, act some bitch. <laughs> I think also a lot of people are so like they just want everything that ends to be because it ended with something really bad happening and honestly sometimes when people separate they have grown in two different directions and they just realize that they want different things and nothing bad had to have happened and people don't like to accept that because it's not like juicy and gossipy and fun and in a small town they live for that like it is the talk of the fucking town and you know it's just boring when it's when it's not juicy so i just want you to remember that like not every separation has to be something severely negative and drama filled and as you age and change your mind and grow and evolve it's also okay for you to outgrow other people and situations and beliefs i know that for me you know one thing that also was kind of forced upon me or the thought was forced upon me was that like it's really bad to only align yourself with people who have the same or similar beliefs. And I think that there is a little truth to that. Like I'm not trying to put myself in an echo chamber. However, when it comes to like basic human rights and now like as we have just seen women's rights, like I genuinely cannot align myself with people in my close circle, family, whatever, relationships, where their morals and views on those things are 
polar opposites. I, I just can't do it. Like I know that some people are like, oh, I can love you based on your differing opinions. That's great if you can do that. But like, I just can't do it. And it's okay if you choose to separate yourself from a group or a church or whatever, because you don't feel like it aligns with who you are anymore. It may have aligned with you at one period in your life and that's okay. And if you've outgrown that and you now have differing beliefs, it's okay. <laughs> like, again, I wish I had someone to tell me that in my life because I desperately needed that. I desperately needed the the courage and the support to realize that it's okay to grow and evolve and change your fucking mind. You know, and honestly, just like being surrounded by that when you genuinely don't have those same beliefs and views, at least for me anyway, it's very uh, horrible <laughs> for my mental health. And I think it's just draining. And, you know, I think that there's a difference between just like avoiding it, like avoiding certain topics. I think really COVID showed that to a lot of us. It divided a lot of people and a lot of families. And, you know, you just had to come to the realization that you simply couldn't talk about those things with certain people. But when it comes to like basic human rights and women's rights and, you know, the abortion and everything with Roe v way that's just happened like it's just more than someone having a differing opinion like these things affect my life and my loved ones lives and like I just can't align myself with that type of mentality even if we have differing beliefs because it's like it's different than just a belief it's not like oh I believe I don't believe in COVID right like you're you're saying you don't believe in my rights or like that gay people shouldn't get married or that they that trans people are sinning you know what I'm saying I'm not saying everyone that's religious thinks this I'm just giving you like some you know things that I don't agree with <laughs> and and one thing that I've learned is that you can't force people to have the same views as you and they can't force you to have the same views as them and you can't really change people there's nothing like on both ends of the spectrum right like I went to pride this weekend and there were a lot of religions there that were reading from the bible and protesting pride you know saying that gay people are sinners and all that stuff and like in my mind I'm like these people that are arguing with each other, right? Because then you had people that were at Pride that were fighting with those people. And I'm like, neither one of them are going to change the other person's mind. I have been on the end of both of that and it doesn't work. It doesn't matter. Like you can have the most solid argument in the world. <laughs> and if that person truly believes that in their heart and that's their religion, that's okay. But it's highly unlikely that you're going to change their mind. I've been very open about my mental health. I've been very open about the mistakes in my past. And I think that at what I've learned about my true self as of late is that the biggest mistake that I have made thus far is not being proud and fully honest about my feelings and my beliefs and morals with people who have differing morals and beliefs than me and that is something that I will no longer be doing moving forward and I know that with that comes a lot of unfollowing and a lot of lost relationships and family and all of that so obviously there's a downside to that but that is me respecting myself at my truest and authentic point and so I hope that that kind of gives you some encouragement if you've been feeling that way to also honor your truest self and make those decisions that will help you honor whoever that is. And it's okay if that changes. Like I've told you guys before, I am not the person that I was at 21, 22, even 23, honestly. Like I made horrible decisions at that age. <laughs> I mean, embarrassing. I was a mess, unmedicated before that, and it was even worse. So <laughs> I, I just want people to like be okay with the fact that you're allowed to change your mind and grow and evolve with time and as long as you are being true to yourself at the time then that's really what matters okay if things don't work out the way that you thought they would or you know you thought people would accept a certain thing and they don't and you have to trust that and one of the biggest lessons that I've learned over the last year is the things that people do and say behind your back when you're not in the room and when they don't think that certain things are going to get back to you is how they really feel. 
And it's kind of like the Freudian slips, you know, like when something comes out, that's how they really feel and you need to listen to that. That's where my freaking head is at and I feel much better. I feel much better saying that. So anyways, uh, I love you guys so much. I have truly, truly appreciated all of the love and support over the years on my channel. If you were around in the Tumblr days and the no hate, just love days, let me know because I love you and I appreciate you if you've stayed this long. So I hope that you enjoyed this chitty chat chit chat video and that's all I have. I'm not fighting with anyone in the comments, so if you have start fighting with me, I'm just going to block you. So <laughs> have the mental capacity for that after this week with everything in the world. So anyways, that's all I have for you in this video. I love you so much. Thank you for listening if you made it till the end, and I will see you in my next video.